what's going on YouTube and the podcast world. So this is gonna be a little bit of a double. We're gonna one shot this video. We got some notes, we might be peeking in there. Uh, so if you're watching this video, you can see kind of what we're doing as we're doing it. Uh, we're filming it as YouTube videos, stripping the audio, putting it on our podcast. So even if you haven't subscribed to our podcast yet, definitely take the time to do that. It's always solid content. Um, every Monday and Thursday we put out episodes. You can listen to us on your way to work, get some good info, and kind of excel in your fitness journey. So let's jump right into it. Alrighty, so we get a lot of questions and a lot of people are asking us, why am I not succeeding on my diet? People will give us some background. Oftentimes a lot of people will say that they're in a deficit and they're eating less than they're burning each day, which technically speaking should get you to lose weight over time. So I'd say the number one biggest thing, um, it would be under logging and potentially lying to yourself. I see this happen way too often. I think a lot of people will potentially just not log as much as they're actually eating. And I see this happen. Sometimes I'll take a look at clients, my fitness pals and stuff like that. And uh, everything's just under logged. And when you think you're in a deficit, you're actually going to be in a surplus. So this goes for oils. This goes for everything. You want to make sure even if you're eating out, you're over logging to account for stuff like that. So yeah, some common culprits that I'll find, especially my online clients, are milk or cream and coffee. Uh, you grab two creamers in your coffee, that's 60 calories plus. So that's gonna add up. And some people will scarf four, cal um, four coffees, right? Yeah. So there's 240 calories. And if you're only eating 1500 calories, that's really gonna throw off your info. So as coaches, we really try to make people aware of that. Um, even nibbling, you know, your husband, wife, girlfriend, whatever, brother, who cares what it is. They say, hey, try my piece of cake. You yeah. take a good chunk of that sucker. You gotta log it, right? Like any input you have, anything that goes in your mouth, just pop it in there, get it logged. It's gonna make a world of difference because the second you actually know fully what you're doing, you can establish your maintenance, you can establish where you need to be for weight loss, where you need to be for bulking, all these good things. But, and furthermore, if you're lying to yourself and you do go over, I really recommend logging it. Yeah, because when you track it still like a lot of people they go over this they screw it They just won't do it and they'll kind of lie to themselves say oh, I won't see it. It's not there That's just not how it works If you actually log it and you can see how devastating it can be and you weigh in the next day And you kind of get an idea of how doing these things affects your bodies I find it helps kind of really stabilize you and center you as to why you're doing what you're doing where you want to be You know and you can kind of with more data points you can actually create more of a of a system to actually succeed. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. The other day I was actually having a, a conversation with a client and uh, he told me he had uh, one fourth of something and when I, when I checked my fitness pal it was logged as I think one tenth which is a 200 calorie difference but if this happens a couple times even though I've assigned you uh, calories to put you in a deficit you're going to be in a surplus or maintenance or whatever and you're not going to achieve your goals so something to look out for and the next thing is kind of pretty similar it's actually just overconsumption on weekends um, I find a lot of people I'm guilty of this I've done in the past is if you're in a deficit and for example you're at 2300 calories each day throughout the week and your maintenance is 28 but then on the weekend you happen to have 4,000 you don't track it you just go over you start drinking and stuff although you were great during the weekend you were at a 500 calorie deficit each day that's going to bring you to at least maintenance or even higher which isn't going to allow you to reach your goal so this is something to look out for a lot of people within these days won't even put it into my fitness pal I've noticed um, because it's so high and uh, you'll be just running in circles and not reaching your goals Number three is not knowing how to properly account something for what it is. So very often like people, I have, I've had clients that have had trouble and they'll go out and they'll say, oh, I had a burger at this local pub mm -hmm. and I just logged it as like a Wendy's burger. Yeah. And there is a big difference and especially like burgers are a great example because a burger can have 20 fat, can have 120 fat. Yeah. There are some that are absolutely just drenched um, in oil, they're a fattier meat, they have more cheese, they have bacon. So I really recommend kind of doing your best mentally. Like when you go out, it's not the end of the world. Just try to account for it. If it's a big patty, you know, log one big patty from a local place you know that's very similar. Log the ingredients and do things like that to really make it as accurate as you can. I mean, I can wish and hope all I want that I could log um, chicken wings as chicken, um, just like breasts. That's not how it works. Like each chicken wing has like pretty much like six to 12 grams of fat plus. Yeah. And that's a ton, right? Like if you compare that to a chicken breast. So if you're out and you just log, oh, 10 chicken wings, go send a few chicken breasts, you're lying to yourself, you're gonna spin your wheels and you're gonna have no idea what you're doing. You're essentially throwing out the process. So you can't be perfect. And obviously there's deviance in foods. Like most foods are about, they can be up to 10% wrong. Even there's rounding with all your nutrients and companies are smart. A lot of things that are zero calorie aren't actually zero calorie. They're closer to one calorie. They don't have to record it. <laughs> 
And there's all these little details, so we can never exactly know, but you want to develop trends and understanding and kind of get better at doing this. And if all else fails, I don't know if talked about this earlier, you can account and kind of up the calories a little bit for that day. And then if at the end of the day you're starving and you, you're paying attention to your hunger patterns, which is actually number four, is to know your hunger patterns, you're really going to get a better understanding of things. So on our spreadsheets for online coaching clients, we have hungry, satisfied, full, and I'm going to get them to record that every day. We also have for the energy levels. Are you like, how are you feeling? Are you feeling ener high energy? You're feeling moderate? Are you feeling drenched? Like, are you tired? Those are really going to give me insights because someone's dieting and they're hungry every day and they feel tired every single day. Their calories are way too low. They're being worked to the bone and their body's taking more than it probably can. Hunger in a diet is a really good signal that you're succeeding because you actually are eating less than you're expending, hence why you're losing weight. So hunger signaling is very important to understand and you want to control it. If you're like, insanely hungry like point of like where you just want to scarf 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 your calories are probably too low and that's going to set you back right and if you're doing that and you're just shoving your face with food every seventh day but the other six are good you're going to spin your wheels like kyle said for the yeah. weekends so hunger signaling is so important and that's why with clients i look past just nutrients maintenance all this data and when you dig deeper and you start to know these things or like let's say if you're eating and you've switched up your meals this week you've always been a great person with keeping track of everything in your weight loss but then one week you just feel super stuffed every single day. Maybe you're eating new foods, maybe you aren't recording something properly. Just kind of analyze everything you're doing. When I'm tracking and sometimes I'll feel like, what the heck, like I'm out of calories too early or I'm out of calories, like I have way more calories than I feel like I should. Sometimes it's a weird day, but sometimes you can actually look at something that could be logged completely wrong. Um, Cause my fitness pal, even that's the most common one people use to track can be peer like peer contributed to. So myself or Kyle could do it. And a lot of times people do it and they'll only put the calories or they'll guess the calories. They'll put no of the macronutrients, which are protein, fats, and carbs. And it just completely throws off all your numbers and makes it really wonky. So sometimes you gotta dig deep in your diary journal and make sure everything's right. Like I was logging a pasta sauce and it was coming out to be like 200 carbs for some reason for 80 calories. And I'm like, this is screwing all my numbers. So that's why you gotta be really, really attentive in a diet. And, and the more you do this, the easier it gets. I only spend like a minute a day logging. At first, it's a bit of a bumpy road, but like I said, once you get into it, you can eventually branch out into intuitive eating and make this a part of your life. That's the beauty and that's a great branch off into the next point. It's all about lifestyle and sustainability. If you can't see yourself, so number five, I would say is lack of sustainability. This is why so many diets fail. And to be honest, we don't have a weight loss problem. We have a weight gain, weight regain problem, sorry. So many people are just going to the next fad, to the next diet. You hear different things each time. And there's actually someone that I would kind of occasionally meet up with or you know just an old buddy and they're they would just always be on the next thing the whole 30 the um just protein shakes or just juicing and at the end of the day like you've got to ask yourself do can i see myself sticking to this diet a couple months from now five years from now and if you say no then it's just not going to simply work like you've got to make sure that it's sustainable that you can stick to it and um just not yo-yo diet so yo-yo dieting is where you're just literally going up and down back and forth you're losing two pounds you're gaining three and it's just an endless cycle and you know it's uh, what honestly i find so many people do so cool, cool well hope you enjoyed chilling with us that is five reasons you're not losing weight like you should be. We've been creating a lot of content for weight loss, so we're gonna kind of try to branch away from that, do some more muscle gain stuff. So make sure you dig through our old uh, content for some inspiration if you're dieting down. Myself and Kyle just did it, so that's why. We like to film what's relevant to our life because obviously it's something we're passionate about, especially in the moment, and obviously as personal trainers and online coaches, we do this a lot with people. But today's episode, this podcast video is sponsored by EHP Labs. This is our supplement sponsor. They make the best supplements in the world. Uh, we're athletes for them, and you can go ahead and save 10%, give them a try um, using code Colossus10. That's on the screen, and that'll be the first link in the description down below. If you're looking for supplements, I definitely recommend that. And if you wanna know the best five supplements, if you're on YouTube, you can click the second link, and that's a video we have about the top five supplements for natural lifters, and that will really help. There's a lot of science behind there, and we'll tell you what you need, depending on your budget, what's worth it, what isn't. And then you can go ahead, hit up EHP. They're the best taste, they're the best dose, and we really like the ethics behind them. So definitely recommend checking them out. Thanks for tuning in, whether you're on YouTube or podcast. Uh, if you're not subscribed to one or the other, make sure to do that. Sub to the podcast, as I podcast. just said. I feel like I'm Scott Herman. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you enjoyed chilling. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.